So now that we've done a problem or that you've learned how to deal with these repeated factors and denominators and doing partial fractions, it opens it up and we can do some more types of uh, problems with the plus. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Here I got x double prime plus 3x prime plus 2x equals t. I don't know if you can see where the repeated factor is going to come from. You might be able to see it already. Um, uh, but anyway, and then x of 0 is 0 and x prime of 0 is 2. So let's Laplace this thing. When I Laplace it, I get s squared big X minus s times x of 0 is 2. Sorry, x of 0 is 0. Um, minus x prime of 0 is 2. And then plus the Laplace of the 3x prime gives me 3 big X um, with an S on it. And then there's, there's no X of 0. It's 0, so I don't have to subtract anything. Um, plus 2 big X equals um, the Laplace of T squared, or sorry, T is 1 over S squared. So from here, uh, big X, factor it. Um, that guy's gone. Uh, times s squared. You know, normally I tell you to write the line in between this line and the one that I'm doing, but it's already pretty much written there, so I'm not I'm not super worried about it. Um, but big S squared uh, plus or s squared plus three s plus two equals. All right, I've got a one over s squared, and then I got to move this guy over to the other side. So I have a plus two. The plus 2 get, needs to get multiplied by s squared over s squared, so I can jam it into this fraction right here. <clears throat> um, that gives me um, x times s squared plus 3s plus 2 is equal to, all right, when I put them in the same denominator, I get 2s squared plus 1 all over uh, s squared. Um, now I need to divide by this guy here, so let's do that. So x is equal to 2s squared plus 1 over s squared times, and now I'm going to factor this thing. Uh, I got s plus 2 and s plus 1 equals. Um, what do we got? I got? You see the repeated factor there, right? So I'm going to go something over s squared plus something over s plus something over s plus 2 plus something over s plus 1. So here, I, I taught you why in the last video, we sp why this piece is here. Now I'm going to show you the fast way to do all this. So you should be good with cover up. I can use cover up for the s plus 2 and the s plus 1. I'm going to hit pause, um, do the work for that, and um, and then come right back. Okay, hopefully you agree with me. Negative nine fourths and three. I showed the work up here, so if you disagree, you can check this work. Um, hopefully I'm right. I've double checked it a couple times. So, um, but I get this negative nine fourths and the three. Now I can use cover up for one of these two. Question is, which one would I need to? Um, what if I if I cover up this piece, does it go here or does it go here? Well, I think I can convince you as to why it's this one. So look, if I cover up the s the s squared, right, in the denominator right here, then it's gonna go with the s squared there. Why is that? Because if I were to just cover up an s right? I would still be left with an S in the denominator. If I were to just cover up one of these and it would go with this one, I would still be left with an S in the denominator. And what would I plug in S equals zero? And then I get in a denominator in, or zero in the denominator and it would break everything because we can't have the zeros in the denominator. Also, I think I've shown you or at least given you some videos on why cover up works. If you can think through the why of cover up works um, while it's still fresh in your head, you know, over the last week, then you should see that when you cover up this, the math of that, where everything gets multiplied by the s squared, it's going to leave this term by itself, and it's going to solve for this term. So hopefully that makes sense. So I can do cover up with the s squared, and that's actually pretty sweet, because the s squared uses s equals 0. 
And that's like the easiest number to plug in because that term's gone, that term's gone, that term's gone. So I get a 1 over a 2 times a 1. So I get a 1 half. Oh, man. And now, here is, so look, if you were to think about all the partial fractions work at the matrices and stuff like that up here, right? Um, I've already eliminated almost all that. I've gotten three of my four variables here, right? I only have one more variable that I need to find. So what I'm going to do is call this A because I can't use cover up to get A, but I can use some tricks. Um, and I'm going to pause for a moment. So here's the deal. And this seems like cheating whenever I teach it to people. They're like, wait, we can't do that. And actually, if you search partial fractions on YouTube, there, YouTube, there will be some videos that will explain it in this way and in its entirety. Um, but cover up is so fast that I like to use cover up first and then to do this next. But here we go. We have two, like I'm, it's not the X, it's this equal to that. And what I'm circling right there, there are two variables. There's an A and there's an S. And I know A has a value. I mean, A could even be zero for all, you know, but I know A has a value and S is the thing that changes. So whatever A that actually works, it has to work for all values of S because S is the thing that is changing here, is the variable. A is just a constant. So what we can do, if, if, if A works for all values of S, we can just decide a value of S to plug in here and then we can, we can solve for A. The key is that I have to use a value of S that has not yet been used. And you may be like, what? Well, look, I used S equals negative 2 to get this. I used S equals negative 1 to get that. Remember, I got that with S equals 0. So I need to choose a, variable, a value of S that is not 0, negative 1, or, two, or negative 2. So in this case, I think, hopefully, like, I really just want to take the smallest number, the easiest number. And there's some little, like, tricks in terms of, like, this number is going to be easier sometimes, but I'm not going to get into that here. But um, look, S equals 1. That value is the easiest value that has not been used yet. Oftentimes, it's 0 or something else. But um, uh, anyway, so I'm going to plug in S equals 1 to this equation right here, and then I can solve for A. So when I plug it in, um, I get, so I'm plugging it in for this thing, this entire thing, this guy, right there, I'm going to plug in S equals 1. Boom. So what's that give me? It gives me 2, 2 times 1 squared is 1 plus 1 over, right, so that's this, uh, I get 1 squared times Three, that's one plus two, times two, that's one plus one, equals uh, one half in the top, and then one squared, oh, so that's just one half, I'll write over one squared so you can see it, plus uh, a over one, um, minus nine over four over three, um, plus three over two. So you may be like, well, that looks pretty bad. Well, um, I'm going to simplify it just a little bit. Um, so look here, this is 3 in the top, and it's going to cancel with that 3. So really, I have a 1 half there. Equals, this is a 1 half, and then plus an A minus, uh, I'm going to write, I'm going to leave it as 9 over 4 over 3 plus 3 over 2. Now, here, you know, in some scenarios, you'll need to be able to solve this equation by hand. For the purposes of my course, I don't care if you use a calculator at this point. So I'm just going to uh, like kind of use order of operations to like plug this into my calculator in one line and um, uh, solve for A. So I'm going to take this guy. I'm going to subtract that, add that because it's negative, and subtract this because it's positive. So I'm going to write out exactly how I would type it into my calculator. I would type 1, oops, over 2, that's this guy, minus 1 over 2, that's this guy. I'm going to skip the A, plus 9 over 4 over 3, and yes, that is correct, 
minus 3 over 2. There we go. I've got it typed in exactly as I had up there, and I can just hit enter. And it gives me negative 0.75. If I need to turn that over to a fraction, I can math frac it, but you should know that negative 0.75 is 3 fourths. So I just type it into my calculator like that. So I should have said a equals, right? And that is negative 3 over 4. From there, I can, this is equal to negative 3 over 4. And I will get rid of this. And maybe, you know, all right, so what I would do if I were you is I would just, oh man, I would just draw an arrow, right? Um, and then we're going to inverse Laplace it. I'm going to copy and paste. So. so again, take that. Look, I just put it right here. So now let me go in a little bit. And all I have to do, my step here is just to inverse Laplace. So let's inverse, well, it's not really that line that I'm inversing Laplace, inverse Laplace, I'm inverse Laplace in this one. So I should put it there. What's that give me? X of T, because that's the inverse of this thing right here. Um, and uh, it gives me, all right, S squared comes from T, right? So this is one half T. Um, and then minus three over four, and the S comes from just a one, so minus three over four, minus nine over four, E to the negative 2t, not t, and then plus 3e e to the negative t. And that's x of t. That's our answer. That is the solution to this differential equation right here. Now, I want to back up a moment because this is wild. This is insane. Think about all the work that we did before to solve for this thing. I would do a characteristic equation. I would find an xc. I would find an xp. I would guess my way into it. It would be at plus c. And then I would take its derivative a couple times, and I would plug it through this thing, and I would set it equal to this, and then I would set up a system, and I would solve for that thing. Right? You see what I'm saying? You should see what I'm saying. And then I would have an equation, and then I would have c's in it, and I would take its derivative once, and then I would set up a new system of equations, and I would solve this. Right? So what I'm trying to say is like, there's a lot of math here and yeah, there are four unknowns here and that actually matches up with the four unknowns that I sort of just mentioned in the system of equations for doing that, that we would have done in the previous unit. But um, this, this Laplace work does undetermined coefficients for us. This right here would be the XP and this right here would be the XC. So to me, it's kind of wild that we can take this totally different method. It is so different from what we were doing before and follow the math through it. Use our little tricks and get to our answer. Um, and that is the power of the Laplace transform. Um, and why does it do it? I keep saying this because I want to keep reinforcing it. The Laplace transform gets rid of derivatives with this line right here, bam, choom. There's no derivatives in this line. Gives me some algebra, I can solve for x, I can manipulate it into a position where I can inverse Laplace it, and then it takes me right to my solution. That's why the Laplace transform is sick. And I have one more for you.